Hey everyone, so before I get to this video, I just came across this weird info uh, Marshall and well, I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Are you losing endless nights of sleep because of back pain? Does your back twinge when you get up in the morning? Has standing or walking become a back-breaking battle? Are you sitting on the sidelines while everyone else has all the fun? Then your life is about to change forever. Introducing the Back to Life 12. I remember back seeing infomercials for this, this thing. This extraordinary medical breakthrough is causing a sensation across Europe because of the amazing results back pain specialists are finally able to achieve for their patients. It's so unique, it holds three worldwide patents and is now uh -huh. available in the United States for the very first time. The amazing Back to Life focuses on. Anyway, uh, I remember many years ago seeing commercials on TV at night about this thing and yeah so it's just weird anyway so uh, that's it for this video nah I'm just joking with you today's autopsy video is one of these things yeah one of these back to life things and I'm gonna tear it apart and see how it works and you all get to watch all right so, for you, those of you that don't know, this is a thing you lay down, you put your legs on here, and it's supposed to help relieve back pain. I don't know anyone that's ever used it, but I guess it could work. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about how it works. And I did pick this up. It's, it is missing the side, the side, uh, the two side pieces here that adds stability to it. So this will kind of tip over without those two pieces there. Um, the specs are a little strange on this. So it's 21 volts AC, 60 hertz, 0 0.8 amps. Um, I don't see a manufactured date on it, but the infomercials are quite old. That one I was showed you at the beginning of this video was from like 2010, so it's it's pretty old stuff now. So I'm gonna operate it at 21 volts. I've already got it set. And then your on button. <laughs> that, I don't know about you guys, but that just, that's just weird. It's actually not very loud. I'll come in closer so you can actually hear what it sounds like mechanically. The mic should be picking that up. But yeah, it's 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 pretty quiet. Your height adjustment there. Alright, enough of that. It's just too weird. Alright, um I'll get the camera set up on the tripod and I'll start tearing this thing down. Alright, so here I go. Now I have had the bottom off of this just to have a peek in. I couldn't resist. But other than that, I'm not going any further. It's not the easiest thing to hold on to either. Yeah, so this is as far as I got. And I'm not exactly sure how to go any farther with it. It's not it's not very clear. Yeah. 
There's two little, two little notches right here, one on either side. I wonder. <clears throat> I don't know if they pull out. I don't know. I honestly don't know what. Wait, what's that? There's actually writing on it. Release. Release what? Just pull up to release. Uh, nothing's, nothing's releasing. Um. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pause this video until I can determine how this thing comes apart. Okay, so it took a little bit of brute force, but. It turns out that this piece here, it's it's actually clipped on with these two little brackets here onto the top. And using two flat blade screwdrivers on either side, I was able to force it off, and this is what I'm left with. Unfortunately, I've got some screw holes, so that should get me somewhere. And thankfully, they're not those weird screws that almost no one ever has any bits for. Like those triangle ones, or... I don't know, there's so many different ones out there that are tamper-proof. I mean, why bother? Even this is actually being a little stubborn. There we go. The other half of your cover. Hmm. All right, so can I actually? Oh, that's kind of neat. I've seen these before. Kind of like like a measuring tape. Your, your height adjustment is actually just a rolled up piece of uh, uh, stainless steel. Oh, well, there's your uh, adjustment button. Jesus, completely full of grease. One moment while I get the rag. There we go. Just in case there's more where that came from. Bottom key, top came off the same way. This part here should do the same. Now, I may have to resort to cutting this. I cannot get it off here. It looks like this whole frame here, the front, is one piece. And I do not think... Well... 
Maybe. Maybe I actually can get it off there. If I can get this out. Sorry if some of this is going off screen. This thing's just big and awkward and annoying. I'm doing my darndest to try and keep it in frame. But do not worry, the stuff that is not in frame is not that exciting anyway. Woohoo, I'm turning some screws. It's the best time of my life. <laughs> There's one of your clips. All right, I'm I'm gonna cut that off. I use these things to, to cut just about everything, including metal. So I don't see why they can't cut this stuff. And there we go. That's quite dense stuff, that is. All right, so. I should, I should do something about that. That's, that's quite sharp. I could easily cut myself on that. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get that over there. Just roll it right back up from whence it came. <laughs> there we go. I shall try. Actually, hold on. So there you go. This is kind of like a winding mechanism in a tape roller. So it goes from four foot eight all the way up to six foot six. Alright, now that the, the skin cutter is out of the way, the only thing and some more grease. Alright, let's just give us a wipe down here. Okay, so it looks like there's some four clips here holding this whole top piece on. It's not even too big. See how difficult it is to get it out. Okay, so I got that out, but it's still refusing to come out. <sighs> I want to get I want to get this off of here. How can I get that? How can I get that off of there? What's holding it on? Looks like there might be some kind of retention clip down in there. One moment. I shall see if this is... And there we go. So that is it. So that's just nothing else but plastic now. Now this should... Yeah. Now we're down to the mechanical side of this. 
Now let me just see if I can actually get my little switch back here because I will run this for you guys to show you the more mechanical side of it. Oh, there's your on-off switch. <laughs> and not actually much else in there. supply here so plug that back in oh and I did take off a little bottom panel while off camera and it turns out there's your motor so I guess I'll just kind of show it before I run it again oh, I've got springs coming at the end and oh, I thought there was something else coming out so there's a gearbox And you see, so you've got a a large ball bearing assembly in there. You got two. I don't know what you call these guides, maybe. All right. So switch power on, and I will run it. And if you look there, it's actually kind of like a piston. It's not supposed to kind of jerk back like that on its own. As you recall, um, this part here had, this actually, I think this is actually just a, a sleeve, like a sleeve bearing. So this, this stabilizes the top of it. Your bearing rotating there, nice and slow. Pretty strong. I'm I'm pulling down on this, and I'm not even slowing it down. All right. Well, enough of that. Let's keep daring. All right, so what's next? Um, oh, there's the manufacture date. Look at that. 2010-07-21. Um, okay, looks like I've got some screws on the top there. So let's, let's go in at those. I don't see anything else to come off. Any other screws, I should say. I always like getting weird things like this to tear apart because I've I've never torn apart one of these before in my life and I always like to have a look inside new things I've never seen before. It's interesting. I think it's a much better way of learning than sitting in a school looking at a textbook of a picture of one of these, you know? Because a picture doesn't animate. You can't see how it's mechanically running. The sounds of it, the revs of the motor, the gear drive running, all that sort of little thing. That's hands-on. There's no better way to learn than hands-on. Okay, so let's see. I've got this off here, but something... Is it just these? Oh yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some tension on that. Um, I'm going to be a little careful here. That's under quite a bit of, out of, 
quite a bit of tension. There we go. So there's one of your springs. So now the now the, the rest of the thing is just actually running on this. And yeah, let me just just run it again like this. The motor probably won't rev down nearly as much as it was before because there's nothing loading it up with the springs. Yeah. So now the motor's nice and steady. Cool. What, now, what's what gets me is why AC? This is obviously a DC brushed motor. No reason why it would not be. So why would they want to just feed it AC? Why convert it to DC on the board? Why not just give it DC to begin with and be done with it? So I think this whole thing, um, okay, here we go. So there's your, there's where your motor went. There's a, there's a lot of ball bearings inside this. Wow. There's got to be at least 20 ball bearings in there. And probably another 15 or so on that side. Hmm, that could be useful. Different sizes. And your part here. Well, that's a bit that's a bit hard to turn. There's definitely some resistance in there. Quite a bit actually. I'm gonna take this out just to see if there's anything hiding in there or not. I don't know if there is, but <clears throat> never hurts to have a look. Okay. No, it's just a really tight connection. Oh wait, it's actually turning this whole thing here. I wonder if that will actually come out of there or not. It... Oh, I think it's two half sleeves. One moment. I think I can actually I think I can actually push that out of there. Yep, there we go. So there's one half of your sleeve. There goes your other one. Rolled away, never to be seen again. Alright, so that's... So I will put aside these two plastic bearings. They could be useful. So what's left here is just your little circuit board. Not really too much to it. Obviously, it's converting your AC input to DC output to run the motor and your switch. And frankly, I don't know why you need this much circuitry on it. It's just simply on or off. It's probably not much to see on the bottom, but I'll take it off anyway. screws holding it on, that's for sure. Jeez. And there it is. There's your little control board. Wow, a bit of, a bit of podgery right there. <laughs> Obviously had to 
jump across there at the last minute for some reason. Maybe they had some issues. Yeah. And that does it for that piece. Now we get down to the the good stuff. So as I was right, it is a DC motor. And it's actually 30 volts. Now I don't have my DC I don't have my DC power supply here, so I can't run it, but you already seen it running with when I was hooked up to the board. It's a shame it's a shame this shaft wasn't on this side. Actually it might be possible to open this up and swap this till it comes out that side. Those bearings look to be about the same size. I wonder. Maybe I shall have a look at some point and see if I can reverse it or not. But that is a good little DC motor. It's It's got a ball bearing in the back. I'm sure it's got one in the front too. It sounded great. Smells fine. No burning. So the thing obviously didn't overheat. Cool. I shall hold on to that. Well, that does it for the Back to Life um, machine, I guess you call it. Or Back Restoration, Back Relief. Any number of names you want to call it. Hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe. Hit the dislike if you didn't like it. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody.